Um, this is a talk that I gave last week to our local Linux group in Rugby. Um, I thought it might be interesting because it doesn't presuppose any packaging knowledge. Um, so I was an ideal candidate for this talk before I wrote it. So a quick hands up, who runs Debian or Ubuntu? So more than half of the room. Um, who has ever packaged any software in Debian or Ubuntu? Okay, so, uh, so who's packaged for an open distribution? So a few people. So I was in the position where I've contributed to a project upstream after finding failings in the project in my user experience of the project uh, maybe seven years ago. So I've been contributing patches upstream um, and now I've sort of become a core developer. But I've never actually contributed back to Debian. The only thing I've ever contributed to Debian is an icon. So if anyone uses ISAL, which is the Mozilla rebranded calendaring application, uh, then I contributed the icon for it. But in terms of actually more substantial contributions, um, I've not really done anything here. So what I want to talk about is how you, as an end user, so not a Debian developer, as an end user, you can actually contribute back to Debian or Ubuntu. So you might think, well, why do I need to package anything? Because surely it's all packaged already. So when I checked yesterday, um, there's over 43,000 packages available for Debian. But the problem is new applications are being released all the time. They might require new libraries. Uh, updated it, um, existing applications, so I might contribute something upstream which pulls in a new library dependency which isn't available in Debian. And one of the problems that uh, the project which I'm going to talk about had was that upstream uses a library which has never been packaged for Debian at all. And so it's always been patched. Up to, the source has always been patched during the packaging process to actually remove that dependency and replace it with one which is available. And if you just look at the bottom, existing packages in Debian may be out of date. So most people are used to running apps, Get or Aptitude, and they see a lot of new packages, and they're running stable. Um, but a lot of packages coming in all the time, new versions, what happens when the packages that you're reliant on gets stable, gets out of date? And so what I'm going to talk about is a package which I've used since 2007, um, which is now over three years out of date in Debian. So it missed the last major Debian release, it missed the last major Debian release before that, so it's now three versions of Debian old. And because we had a very active uh, packager, I was sort of leaving it to him to get, get things packaged, time passes, nothing happens. I always run the upstream code anyway, so I'm not affected by the fact it's not been packaged, but a lot of end users are, because they just use apt-get to install their software. So I kind of thought, well, I should probably try and do something about it, it's got to this stage. It doesn't look like anyone else is going to pick it up, so it's sort of the best form suggests that you uh, pick it up yourself and try and contribute back. So we've got a version which is now, as of today, it's three versions old, as of maybe next week, um, source of Java, it's going to be four versions of them. So what I wanted to do was to try and contribute a, a new build of the current release back to Debian, so that anyone running Debian or Ubuntu, because the package is built back into Ubuntu, can make use of it. And the way to do that if you're not a Debian developer is to use the non-maintainer upload process. So that's, if you're an end user, you don't have any privileges in Debian or Ubuntu, you can just build a package, find somebody to sponsor it, get it uploaded to Debian. The maintainer who looks after the package normally, they can pick it up again and they can carry on, uh, they can carry on building in the future if they want to, or they can decide to transfer ownership if their workload is too much work. So, the first thing that you need to do if you're looking at a non maintainer upload is you need to find a sponsor because as an end user, you don't have any upload privileges. So Debian are pretty strict about who can upload to Debian. So you may already know some Debian developers locally. Um, so I happen to know one who moved out to Southampton, has now moved back to Bedford. And I'm in rugby, so we uh, generally meet at the Milton Keynes Poland. Um, so we kind of reconnected and he was happy to sponsor my packages, which was pretty good. But Debian also released a platform called Mentors where anyone in the world who's looking for a sponsor can find one, hopefully connect with one. Sponsors can look at the packages which are wanting people to um, get sponsored and they can find any which they're interested in and users can upload them and try and find a sponsor. Now the process for the non-maintainer upload is 
ideally, you notify the packager who's been packaging it previously. You notify them of your intention because you, if they're already in the middle of getting your package, you don't want to sort of step on their toes and then create extra noise by waving a, a sort of a bad version and then they post and then they um, upload their own proper version. So it's ideal to notify them in advance. With XML TV, um, the maintainer is happy for non maintainer uploads. So on the Debian wiki, there's actually a page where developers and projects within Debian can say whether they're happy for the non maintainers to upload the old top packages. And it happens that the maintainer for XML TV is on that list. So once we've notified them, you might not hear back. I mean, in my case, I've not heard back for months. Um, it's probably, um, well, I think it's happened for three years. Um, but I've sort of gone through the hoops, tried to contact them, to let them know. Uh, not had anything back, so we can now move on to actually building the package and trying to get it into the Debian app. So, fairly straightforward process. We get hold of the upstream source, so it can be from a tarball, so you might be downloading it from SourceForge, you might be checking it out from GitHub. So, anywhere you get the sort of uh, the source code or generic. You want to try and get a copy of the existing packaging repository. Now, a lot of them for Debian are on the Debian infrastructure, so you can easily do a clone um, of the uh, repository. In our case, it's actually on a self-hosted third-party site, which actually disappeared last week for a week. Um, so we're sort of having quite a lot of fun uh, trying to get hold of various bits and pieces we need. Um, but once you've got a copy of the upstream source and a copy of the packaging repository, you can then try and import the new upstream source version into the repository and then try and get it, get it built into a, uh, into a Debian package. With an Omni-Tainer upload, because you're not a Debian developer, your sponsor's going to want it to be as clean as possible. So when I say clean, um, you don't want to try and patch a lot of stuff. So what you want to try and do is just get the upstream current version packaged. Don't try and do anything else. If you get to maintain it in the future, then that's an opportunity to actually correct things and fix warnings and things. But in terms of not maintaining your upload, you just want to package the upstream source and then give it to your sponsor to try and upload it exactly. The typical workflow for building packages, there are quite a few on Debian. I mean, there's, there are many ways to do many things on Debian. Uh, so the one that I'm going to look at is called Git Build Package. Now, this builds packages out of the Git repository. It's pretty self-explanatory. And like Git, it um, includes a lot of sort of sub-commands and sub-tools. Here I've highlighted the importer reach um, command. That will let me import an upstream tarball. So our project upstream is on the source forge. So every time there's a release, there's a tarball to download. We import it into your Git repository. There's the build package command, as it says, that will try and build the package that you can upload to your sponsor. And there's the DCH command get change, and that will create a change on input. That's uh, not important. So, a quick look at what your packaging repository will look like. It's in Git. Um, so, you'll typically have a master branch, a pristine type branch, and an upstream branch. The master branch is where all of the packaging work occurs. So if you're um, not aware, with your packaging um, source code for Debian, you add a Debian directory into the root of your source code. That's where all of the customization happens. So all of the rules for building it, all of the patches, uh, all of the copyright information for your Debian. There's an upstream branch, and that's clean. That's kept clean, and that's where the upstream sources are imported into. And you have a pristine tar branch, so if you're using uh, tarballs, the pristine tar branch is used to commit extra information so that you can dump out the a bit for bit copy of the original tarball from the Git repository. So you can go, you can import it into the repository, then you can also export it back. And there should be no difference in the two tarballs. And as I mentioned, our upstream packager has already got an online Git packaging repository, so Rather than starting again from scratch, let's not let's use his work. So we've got a Git URL here that we can clone from. We can have a quick look. We know I don't really know what um, packaging strategy he's using. He's using Git build package. Um, but when you clone a packaging repository, it's good to try and understand how the packager has been packaging uh, and follow his or her um, strategy. So that if you want to reintegrate the changes back into their repository, nothing's going to break. And also, uh, Git, build, Git build package is um, a pretty common way to uh, package in Debian. So, this, uh, a few slides just setting up our packaging repository. 
we're creating um, a build area and tarball subdirectory. Um, that's where um, tarballs are dumped out, the Christie and tar. The build area is where hopefully the successfully built packages are dumped. And you'll notice the third um, command, instead of using a git claim, it's using a gbp claim. So that's a git build package specific command. <laughs> And what that does is it essentially does a git claim, but then it also sets all the tracking branches you need for packaging. If you just do a git claim, you then have to set up the upstream branch, you have to set up the Christine tail branch. So the GBP claim command actually does all that for you. So it's just one less thing to worry about. We download the upstream tunnel, so in our case we download it, download it from SourceForge. Um, we import it in the import rich command. The command will allow the electronic guest version of some things that's fairly intelligent, but it will ask you to verify what version um, upstream source code you're importing. It's then going to import it. It's going to merge it into the master branch. So you can start to work on packaging side of things. And it also tags it in the Git repository as well. So you have a nice, probably legible, um, nice Git log graph there. But if you're actually looking at my speed, you can see that it's tagged the upstream uh, branch with the version that you've just imported. It's merged it into the master branch, and you can also see some of the previous work that the upstream package has done. So we've now got the upstream source code into our Git packaging repository, and now we need to actually sort out our build system. So the idea with Nepkin is we build into a clean environment so that you can be sure that the dependencies that you specify for your package, those, those dependencies you know are going to be available. So when we set up um, a clean image, so I use Cow Builder, um, which is kind of like a, a wrap up around Peel Builder, Peel Builder. What that does is it sets up a minimal environment with any sort of the minimum base Debian system, so that anything that you specify in your uh, package build configuration, if those dependencies aren't met, the build's going to break spectacularly. Um, if you've got them right, it's going to build, and it's, you're not going to require any more uh, dependencies. And by default, we target the unstable release because in Debian, packages tend to go into unstable, uh, which is also known as SID. And after maybe 10 days or so, we get tripled into testing. And then after maybe, two, well, depending on where Debian is in its release cycle, um, it could be a month, it could be maybe two years if we're sort of near the end of the release cycle, that version will eventually get into the stable release. And the cycle kind of repeats itself. So within the two years, you're probably going to be uploading more versions, newer versions of your upstream source code. Um, so we're hoping that some newer versions will get into Debian. Um, people can pull from testing, people can pull from unstable when they're running stable if they want to get updated versions of particular packages. Um, so this is um, a slide mainly for our work um, just to show you how to set up a cow builder instance. Um, we tell it where to install it, we tell it if we're going to use a, an online mirror, um, and we tell it which distribution to build for. So we're building for SID. So the Debian change log command, um, one of the important um, pieces of packaging puzzle is to let end users know what's changed in the new release. So there's a dev change uh, tool to actually mostly automatically create the change log for your new version. There's also a version within the git build package um, command which will also put all of the commit messages from commits between most recently packaged version and the version that you've packaged and it will populate the change log with those messages, which you can then edit as you need to. And one thing for, uh, one thing to bear in mind when doing an NME package is you have to be very careful about how you number your package. So there are strict rules in Debian about how packages are numbered. Um, on the slide you can see a proper release would be uh, 0.5.6-1. So that's a proper release by a proper Debian developer. If it's me doing it, I have to, um, abide by certain rules and so my, my release, my first package would be um, 0.5.66-0.1. So my package number always sorts lower than the Debian developers, so it takes precedence. Um, and that's important. So we've got a, a build system set up, we've got our upstream source in our repository. Uh, we can try and build the package. Uh, it might work. Uh, if there's very little changes upstream, so there are no new binary dependencies, um, no new um, sort of make file changes, it might just work and spit out some of the uh, So we can try that with a GDP, GDP build package file. 
And if it's successful, the devs will be bumped into the building. But frequently, things will go wrong. So it could be um, you set up your building structure incorrectly. So there might be permissions problems. So cow builder, p builder, they need pseudo access. So you need to make sure that your build user has got pseudo access in order to write it to the right places. The upstream source might have added new library dependencies. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, I might have added some commits, which are also called in new libraries. So, XMLTD is primarily a Perl distribution. So, I might have added some code, which means the Perl libraries, they're not available, so you'll close them. And also, you might find that you've got library differences between the stable release of Debian and the unstable release. So, something which we noticed a few weeks ago, the new library version got uploaded into the stable. That's what we are trying to build against, but the unstable version had deprecated some things which were still perfectly valid in the stable version of the library. So we needed to up, uh, we need to patch the upstream code to uh, work around that. And also there might be test failures as well. So a lot of applications will include a test um, uh, a test infrastructure during the build process to make sure basic functionality is working, and those those work great between versions. So you might want to selectively backport some bits from upstream so you can fix problems. We also might want to do the opposite, so we might want to actually apply some Debian specific things to the upstream source, which aren't appropriate to actually push back upstream. And whenever we're doing any packaging work, we always use the Debian directory. So if we're wanting to do any packaging, um, there are a few, as usual, there are a few ways of doing it. Um, Git build package has its own command, so it uses a patch queue, PQ, um, and that keeps patches and branches in the Git repository. So it keeps it pretty clean that way. The package that I'm in a new in, um, uses a tool called Quilt. So it, um, it uh, imagines a series of patches as, as a, well, I guess a call to patches. So you've got a stack of patches which you can pop and push onto your source code as required. And because that's what we were using, I didn't want to change anything in the NMU process, so I carried on using that process. So as I said, Patches are treated as a stack. You can have an unlimited number of patches, and they apply they apply sequentially. So you want you don't just patch um, sort of patch a file and patch it, and patch another file and patch it. You need to make sure they all apply cleanly. And during the build process, all of the patches are just pushed all of them sequentially pushed on top of all of the source code. If there are any problems, um, you're allowed to have um, offsets. So if anyone knows about this, you can have offsets, but you can't have any fuzz. So if you have fuzz. You need to refresh your patches so they apply more cleanly. Some more Debian specific comments. So, Quilt by default won't look in the Debian patches directory. It will look somewhere completely different. So, if you don't, um, if you don't have the good Quilt, the build process is going to blow up. So, when we talk about Debianization, we're talking about how to make the package suitable for uploading into the Debian archive. So, you have a number of files, which I don't know how much will be, hopefully, pretty. Um, so we've got a changelog, so that keeps a record of all of the important changes between versions. We've got the control file, so that specifies source, build time dependencies. So if you, if you, how many people have run apps get source package name to actually download the upstream source? So what you want to make sure and um, get uh, install build. If you want to install the build depths for a package, you can. Choose to, if you're going to be rebuilding the source, you can check out just the build dependencies for a package. So you know, hopefully, um, that uh, if you install the build dependencies, you'll be able to build the source without any problems. And the Debian control file is used to specify those build type dependencies. The copyright file, so it's one of the most important things in Debian, so in the Debian free software guidelines, the package must be able to go into Debian, into the Debian archive. They do like free software. <laughs> and you've got news files, and so the news file is sort of a generic news file for release. The Debian, the Beaming Debian file is more specific about why you're doing things in a particular Debian way, and maybe it's different from upstream. There's a rules file, so it's essentially a make file to tell the build process how to build your packages. So it looks like a make file, so if anyone's looked at a make file, um, you probably feel right at home, but if you've got um, certain things that you need to do to the source to maybe poke it into the right directories or whatever, this is one of the reasons that you would do that. You've got a watch file, so there's a tool called ViewScan that can look at the watch file, which is basically a regex of 
where you can find the versions of the packet that are the upstream source. So there's a source for the red group, a regular expression. The use scanner tool will actually pass the watch file and it will go and talk to source and it will try and work out if there's a new release upstream. And this gets into the Debian infrastructure, so every so often this is run. And as a maintainer, you have a nice uh, tabulated page with all of your packages, all of your current versions of Debian, and it will tell you automatically if there are new upstream versions and you should think about the packaging. And we have some docs files, we have some install files. This tells the Debian build process, once it's built to your package, whereabouts in the file system when it's installed by an end user, you want the binaries and the docs um, and the main pages to go. So at this stage, we're, we've hopefully got a clean build, so things are building nicely, um, and we want to think about doing a release so that we can push it upstream uh, to our sponsor. They can look it over, they can give us feedback, um, we can um, sort of gauge how well they're doing, they can push back some changes that they want us to make, they might also might get to push back some changes they don't want us to make, um, to try and keep it clean. In my case, um, the new package, just by way of it being over three years since a lot of their version was pushed into Debian, there are seven outstanding tickets in Debian which are fixed automatically without me doing anything. Just because either people have requested for a new version, or there are things which are broken in old versions which have now been fixed. So I don't need to do any patching, but I can close these bugs. And what we do in the change log is we add some text, so it closes, um, and a string of bug numbers. So you can look on bugs.debian.org, through your package, you can find all the relevant bug numbers. Once this package gets into Debian, those tickets are automatically closed. So you don't need to do any more work. Um, and the people that originally filed the bugs, they get the email saying, we think your bug is now closed. Please check the new, please check the new version. And importantly, for a non-maintainer upload, um, there's a tool in Debian uh, called DevDiff, which as you may imagine, does a diff of the dev files. Um, so as a non-maintainer, as I mentioned at the beginning, you want your, your dev to be as clean as possible. Um, so you don't want to be introducing lots of extra packaging noise. All you really want to do is be packaging the upstream source and not making any other changes. So the way that we can find this out using DevDiv, um, so you've got your, you've got your um, current Debian version, which you can easily download. You've got your just-built package version. You can easily do a diff of the two devs and actually get a list of the files which have been added or removed. So that's sort of a basic thing. If your source pack, Debian source pass package, so in the case of XMLTV, you've got one source package, but it actually spits out four library packages. So you've got a library, you've got a GUI, you've got the core utilities, and you've got, the, and you've got, the, you've got a meta package. So that pulls an awful thing. So the dev diff, if you give it two changes files, that will give it, that will um, run the above command on all of the devs which have been generated from the changes file. So it will tell you all of the files which have been added or removed between the two versions. And most usefully at the bottom, if you give it two Debian source control files, so ESC files, that will actually do a proper diff of the contents of those of this, uh, packages. So you can actually see proper diffs of what's been changed, what's been added, what's been deleted. And really, you just want to see the upstream source here being changed and very minimal. You might want to see a small change in the change log. Uh, you might need to see a change in the rules file, but apart from that, you really, really want to see changes in the upstream source. So, we've hopefully got a fairly clean package. We've got minimal dev diffs. One thing we need to do before we can upload it to Debian is we need to sign it with that key. So, we've got a chain of trust. Um, all packages in Debian are signed. If you don't really have a key, um, there's a very good wiki page explaining what you need to do. Uh, once you've generated your key, you need to push it to a key server um, so that anyone can get hold of your public key uh, to, uh, to, validate, uh, to validate your package. Um, and if you know any other local Debian developers or you, you ever see them, it's always a good idea, if you've already got a key, to get them to sign it. Because obviously the more people um, who can sign your key, the more trust you gain. And there's a dev sign command, you specify your key ID, and you sign the changes file, and that in turn will sign the other uh, relevant files. And then sort of the last part of the chain is um, you've got your signed build packages, you upload them to Debian Mentors. So there's a command for that, dput. Uh, Mentors is an alias, so the next slide I'll show you um, config. 
So we can have multiple different, you might be learning into multiple different places, but there's a sort of a, a, a standard stanza for mentors uh, to apply different higher edge to TV. Um, and then we can give it the name of the uh, changes file from your successful build. That will upload all of your build packages, including the binary packages, to mentors, and then it will automatically delete all of your binary packages. So all the all the sponsor gets are your source packages. Your sponsor comes back and gives you feedback. Hopefully, nothing too severe. Um, in my case, it was just the dev deck was a bit too noisy because I was trying to fix too many things because it had been three years. We're also thinking about maybe trying to backport it into stable. So people people running stable are already missing versions for four years now, essentially. Um, so we're trying to trying to be nice with the users. And integrate your changes, get them rebuilt, get them re-uploaded. Once your sponsor's happy, they can say, I'm happy. Um, they'll upload them to the queue, and usually within about 10 days, they'll get pushed into the Debian archive. 10 days is kind of an average. Some packages can be pushed immediately, so if you're uh, building a package which is on the low MMU list, then theoretically they can, they can be uploaded the same day, um, because the, the upstream maintainer doesn't mind. The idea about the 10-day wait is that you can uh, actually get the upstream maintainer to notice that you've uploaded a new version. Um, a quick slide about where can I get these build tools. Um, so the dev, the dev scripts package is basically a big one, which is where a lot of the useful stuff is. Um, most of the other tools are in their own named packages. So, um, has anyone got any questions? Um, I'm not a Debian developer, I sort of would like to be one eventually one day, um, but <coughs> I've been contributing upstream and I've seen my changes filter into Debian from the top, um, but I've never had to kind of push them back, push them back from underneath, as it were. Um, so, I mean, I found the world of packaging is enormous, there are lots of ways to do things. Um, have any talked about the non maintainer upload process? I also talked about using an existing package. So this doesn't cover from the ground up packaging a brand new package, uh, but most of the concepts are the same, so a lot of people will choose to use Git build package. And if you're looking for information, the mental site and mailing list are full of really useful information because it's essentially people in the same situation as you, so you're starting from scratch, you don't know what you're doing. Um, you're sort of looking for uh, tutorials and help and uh, someone to guide you. So they're, they're very useful resources. Um, I just stuck 